In this video, I'll give you three hobby tips that seem obvious to some, but that you might not know. I'll admit it, I like to watch miniature painting tutorial videos. I know they don't get the big views on Wargaming YouTube, not, you know, like the industry drama videos or competitive meta videos and stuff like that, but I find them important for several different reasons. One, even if it's a tutorial for a thing that like I know how to do, like how to paint yellow armor, uh, there's frequently some small step or thing that I didn't know, and you know, now I do. The other reason I watch them is to see how people explain things. When you get into the hobby, you frequently start to take you know, certain concepts for granted. Obviously, someone involved in a hobby must understand this thing because I understand it. That's the general idea. Therefore, some things can be overlooked during explanations in tutorials and stuff like that. I, I seem to have a good eye for looking at things from a beginner's point of view. That's always been a thing I've always had, possibly because I'm smart about how dumb I am. I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, this is part of what helps me make videos to help get people into wargaming, talking about things that we might think are obvious, but aren't. So here's three tips you might know if you've been doing this miniature painting thing for a while, but again, you might not know all of these or every little part of them, you know. Uh, and if you're relatively new to miniature painting, these might really help you out. Also, there's a, a quick bonus tip right here. Uh, start watching more tutorial videos here on YouTube. Not only can you still learn new things, even from videos about techniques that you already understand, but it also kind of helps out the creators who make tutorial content and hopefully keeps them making more. Tip number one, keep your hands steady. Th this seems very obvious, of course. You know, you, you want to keep your hands steady when painting your, your tiny, tiny little people. Um, it, you know, it's how you get brush control and stay in the lines when painting your figures, right? This tip isn't simply telling you that you should keep your hands steady. That's, you know, you should. Uh, it actually tells you how to keep steady, you know, with your hands and all that stuff and hopefully gain some more brush control. The trick is that it's not just one thing, it's a whole host of different things. One of the most important things and something that I see new painters not doing all the time Use a paint handle. Holding a model by its base, let's say if you're right-handed, your brush is here, your left hand, okay. So holding a model by its base with your fingers is a terrible way to paint, and it will make the model more wiggly and harder to control, right? You've got two fingers, your index finger and your thumb here, and they are fighting against each other to press against this thing and they're constantly fighting, and then it's wiggling it, and then it's making the model go back. It's just, it, it's, it's not a good idea, you know. Um, it's much better to be holding on to a thing with your entire hand, your fist, and it will keep it much more steady than just trying to pinch it between your fingers, right? Also, you, you know, you potentially get more oils and stuff from your hands on the model uh, when you hold on to it directly like that, which will make your paints act funny as you try to paint over those oils. So it's, it's just better to paint with your model attached to a handle. And believe me, the handle doesn't need to be fancy. When I first started getting a bit more serious about painting, I stuck models to old pill bottles with poster putty, sometimes called blue tack, poster tack, things like that. It's made to replace uh, tape for sticking posters to your walls, right? Any kind of putty like that. And it, it worked really well as a handle. Some pill bottles can be real chunky, so that's it's real nice. Um, and they're really super cheap, especially if you have to take pills. I've seen people use the same technique to attach their models to thick dowels or, you know, rectangular blocks of wood, old paint pots, whatever. A paint handle doesn't need to be a store-bought solution. You can get away really cheaply if you want to. However, as this way of kind of holding your models during painting has become more popular over the last decade or more, I mean, that's the way it seems to me, the companies have gotten involved and designed tons of store-bought solutions. And they can be kind of nice. Honestly, I now love using the Games Workshop paint handles, although I prefer the older, kind of original, chunky ones that they came out with versus the newer, slimmer ones due to my big hands. 
Um, but it, it, because it's so easy to attach and detach models to the handles, that's why I like them. It's just spring-loaded and it's real super, super simple. But poster putty isn't as quick and there's frequently, you know, some cleanup on the underside of the base as well with getting all the extra poster putty off sometimes. There's tons of companies out there with different solutions for paint handles, so I'm sure you'll find something you like if you're looking for a commercial product. There's also a lot of 3D printed solutions if you're looking for something like that, or even like laser cut MDF handles if you're into that kind of thing. But as I said, you don't need to buy something. You can use nearly anything that you like as a handle, block of wood, paint pot, pill bottle, like I said, and then, you know, either some poster putty or some people like to use double-sided uh, foam tape or, you know, like whatever you want to use to stick it to the model. Then you're done. But just using a painting handle by itself doesn't completely fix your problem. It helps you, you know, to control the model very well. Yes, certainly. But what about the rest of your body? You're all made out of wiggly meat, right? You know, so that's certainly a problem. Again, you want to steady your hands, so you need to press most of your wiggly meat parts together to make them as stable of a platform as possible, a meat platform, if you will. So the next part of steadying your hands is something everyone should be doing. Keep your wrists together. Games Workshop doesn't want you to keep your wrists together. Or at least they don't seem like they want it with all of their little cartoon characters that they show, you know, painting models in, uh, you know, on, on Work in Progress Wednesdays or whatever the heck that they call it on Facebook, they have these little illustrations, right? I've noticed in each of these three different illustrations with these three different little characters, they're all keeping their hands apart as they paint. They're using handles and they're using a brush, but no, but their, their hands are apart. And that is straight up the wrong way to paint. That's not even like a value judgment or an opinion. Every good painter I've ever seen paints with their hands together. Arm movements in painting, tiny little miniatures, are much less precise than, say, finger movements. As humans, our fingers are designed for fine motor skills, while our big arm muscles, like biceps and triceps and the, the other ones, I don't know, are, are, they're designed for strength, you know? So to help stop your meat from wiggling so much, Lock your elbows to your sides, right? Lock your elbows. Or maybe place them on a countertop if that's how you prefer, but you need to stabilize that, and I always lock them against my sides. And then lock your wrists together. Doing both of these things, elbows and wrists, right? Uh, it, having also then a nice, comfortable paint handle as well to hold the model will do more to help your brush control than anything else. Really, that was the biggest tip for you to take away from today's video, uh, but here are some other slightly shorter tips, right? Tip number two, constantly keep your brushes clean. This sounds maybe fussy and a bit fastidious and boring, but it's actually pretty easy and will help your painting and save your brushes so you don't have to constantly keep buying new brushes, which will also save you money as well. Both parts of this tip are pretty important, but the first one is easier and better for you in the long run. Because I'm painting to play games, right, and, and not usually for fancy display painting purposes, although I've done some fancy display painting recently and I won an award. Pachow! Uh, therefore, you know, I'm, I'm usually doing a lot of assembly line painting. Let's say you have a squad of 10 soldiers who are all in the same uniforms or power armor or whatever. You paint all the boots the same, then you go on to the pants and then the helmets and whatever. So it's boots, 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 and then pants, 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 you know, whatever. This means you end up with like kind of the same paint or speed paint or wash or whatever on your brush for longer periods of time as you paint all those boots or pants or boots and pants. The longer that the paint sits in your brush as you paint 10 pairs of boots or whatever, the more it sticks to the bristles in your brush. The more that you go back and dip into the paint to get more and to do more boots, the more of the earlier leftover drying, tacky, icky paint gets worked farther and farther up into the bristles of your brush and closer and closer to the ferrule, which is that little metal thing. That is not where you want paint. Not at all. And sure, you'll rinse your brush out when you're done painting all of the boots in that thing, right? Uh, in that group, and now you need to change colors and start painting pants. But after that color has been in there for a long time, the damage could already be done. The solution is to rinse your brush a lot more than you probably already do. I used to wait until I was finished with the 
five to ten sets of boots or, or, or whatever. It doesn't always have to be boots, but you know, for the example. Uh, I would get through all of that stuff, right, and finish, and then, you know, rinse the brush to change colors. And then I'd find that the brush was pretty gummed up, especially with, like, speed paints, contrasts, washes, those types of transparent paints. There's something about them that has a tendency to stick to those bristles the longer that they're in there, right? And then I'd have a really hard time clearing out the brush and getting the gunk out of the bristles. Now, I rinse out my brush in my water pot quickly after generally every second model. You know, when I would generally kind of need to re-dip anyway to get some more paint in there. So when painting assembly line, you know, it I've never had fewer issues. Also, if you find you go through brushes really quickly, it's normally not crappy brushes. It's crappy maintenance. Sorry for the tough love, but it's true. Get yourself some good brush soap. I personally love uh, Gentastic's Drunken Brush Goop from Monument Hobbies. And then clean your brushes at the end of each paint sesh, at least. Very frequently, I will clean during paint sessions as well, right? So you get the brush wet, right? And then you go and you build a lather on the bristles and work that up really nice. And then I usually work the lather on the side of my hand and just, you know, and, and then just really get it all worked in there. And when you, and when everything looks nice and clear, when you don't have any more like weird gunk and stuff like that down near the metal and all that kind of, I then rinse, rinse everything out very, very well. And uh, boom, clean brushes. It'll save you brushes, which of course then saves you money. Last tip, and this one can be a bit controversial, you don't only have to use water to thin your paints. Again, many veterans know this, but the concept can be a bit daunting to new painters. If anything, using a touch of medium to make the paint a little bit more fluid or a little bit more medium to turn it more your paint more into like a glaze or even maybe kind of a pseudo wash is a lot more reliable and controllable than using water for that in many situations. At its simplest, using medium instead of water in your acrylic paints is less harsh on the paint. Too much water can dilute the binders and stabilizers that hold the pigment particles in acrylic paint, thereby kind of breaking, as it's usually known, the paint. The, the pigments can get patchy and weird in some situations when spread on surfaces, like, you know, the surfaces of your miniatures. I'll be honest, I just started doing this myself. I've always been kind of a stalwart, you know, water is just fine kind of guy when painting. Um, but I started using medium instead of water when I was working on that display piece that I did, and now I'm starting to use it more on gaming pieces as well. It's dead simple. All you do is you just get a little bit of medium onto your clean brush instead of dipping it in the water, and then you take that, you know, and then you put that into the blob of color on your palette and, and, and mix it all around. You don't even need very much either. Just like a little dab will do you generally, depending on what you're trying to do. The other benefit is that medium evaporates much slower than water, so it'll keep your paint fresher and usable for longer, which at the very least saves you paint and time since you won't have to constantly put down new paint after the earlier stuff has dried out. And it'll make your paint generally separate less on your wet palette too. If you're new to the hobby, hopefully these things will help you to paint better. They're things that are either generally overlooked in online tutorials or just things that get missed by new hobbyists, but they can be very important to your growth as a miniature painter. Every little negative issue that you bump up against in your hobby can be another thing to maybe kind of put you off of the hobby. So I want to try to make these issues, you know, less of an issue, right? And if you've been doing this for a while, maybe there was still something here for you to learn. It's important to always keep learning. So keep watching tutorials here on YouTube. Like I said, uh, even if you're a pro painter, you still might discover something that you didn't know when looking at it through another person's point of view. Or you can just kind of have fun judging people for painting wrong. It's totally up to you. What did I do wrong in this video? Or did I teach you something? Or did I miss something obvious that they don't want you to know? And who are they anyway? Let me know all of this down in the comments below. Hit the, you know, like button and all that kind of stuff to help the video get out to people and also, you know, cause tiny explosions. Those are also fun. Subscribe for more. And thanks for watching.